doggy walk before getting back on the trail. The water sprinklers came on right as I was walking by. <laughs> Time for my Red Bull. I feel like I should be sponsored by them by now. Back at the Bear Mountain Bridge. Oh no! Almost time to get out of the car. Boo. It's just me and Wilson again. I had to stop and take a break here. I'm sweating so much. And I looked up the weather. It's 98% humidity right now. Fantastic. And at the same time, I noticed there was a uh, heat advisory for tomorrow. It says heat index up to 104. That's going to be fun. <laughs> well, fall number three in the books. I slipped on that rock while playing on my phone, looking to shop for something. And kept it together for a second but then landed on my butt on the hillside no harm done just my pride again but you know what for fall number three at 1400 miles plus still not so bad and still in good shape no uh, injuries maybe that should teach me a lesson to stop trying to multitask but nah you know it won't <laughs> Ugh, it's mosquito city today Nothing like being pierced by dozens of micro needles all day. I might have to break down and put my deed on. I'm on the trail here. Pop out on the road and look, there's a deli. I was hoping to hit here for lunchtime, but you know what? Breakfast is okay. It's about 9 a.m. Well, quarter two. We're going to see what we can get to snack on in here. Bunch of hikers. Little youth group. Oh my goodness, deli stuff, ice cream, drinks, bagels, pastries, coffee, I don't know what to get. Check this out, they got a whole deli section, a grill, BLT, soda, some Italian pasta, another Red Bull. They got t everything that I would need in here. I could totally do a full resupply in this one. I know it's weird to film in the bathroom, but that parasite can cause an intestinal <laughs> There's a TV. <laughs> How much time do they think we're spending in here? So that place was the Appalachian Deli. And I am stuffed. That'll keep me going for a couple more hours for sure. And I just found out that one of the Wranglers I used to work with is in the area for a wedding, Olivia. So she plans to meet up with me a little later today. How fun! I'm seeing so many people! <laughs> Y'all you hear that? I'm not sure if the microphone's picking it up, but it sounds almost like cannon blasts to me. I wonder if West Point is doing something. And here we have the very rare and elusive miniature dinosaurs. We're very lucky to have seen them. <laughs> I love finding random bits of history along the trail. This right here is the foundation of an old barn that served as an inoculation station for the Continental Army. That sign said that General Washington, when he found that smallpox was endangering his army, he forced everyone to go ahead and get inoculated. And so this is the site where they did it, right here. Pretty neat. And right over there, they say, is the foundation of the adjoining farmhouse. Not too much there. Are any of y'all like me who like to just stand here for a while and soak it in and wish that you could, again, rewind time and just picture what people were here, what were they sitting on, to get their shots, their vaccines. What were they dressed like? What were they like? What'd they look like? What do they talk like? I'd love to be able to rewind time here. 
There's a little bit more now that I climbed over here. Perhaps that was the foundation in the basement wall right there. This is the farmhouse side. Tick number two, fantastic. We gotta get them off immediately. It's funny too, because I had just done a quick tick check. This little guy is what I carry to take ticks off with. I had it packed away in my pack, but clearly I'm gonna put it in a more accessible place in the hip belt pocket now. Yay, we're getting into some ripe blueberries again. All right, lovely. Look, it's Olivia. Olivia used to work out at the canyon with me. Another female wrangler and we've got Greg too. Hey Greg, what's up? Living the dream. <laughs> and they bought me a Red Bull. This is my third one for the day. <laughs> Look at this big old tree. But check out this big old tree's roots. They're practically a tree in themselves. Isn't that crazy? I like when roots kind of give us stepping stones though. Give you a little flat area to step on. Check out this old mining road. Guthook says that horse teams probably use this road to haul ore out of the mines. And at uh, Bear Mountain State Park, there was a mining exhibit that said, two things that I remember that were mined in this area were graphite and iron. This is really neat and unexpected right here. It says there's a man in Japan who lost his beloved cousin and he put a telephone booth in his garden with an unconnected rotary phone where he would talk to his cousin. And after a tsunami hit Japan, a lot of other people, it says thousands, used the same, the same phone that he had installed uh, to talk to their deceased loved ones as well. And so it gives you a place where you can um, learn more about it, share your story. Isn't this neat? It says, it's for all who grieve. You're welcome to find solace. Please use it to connect with those you have lost, to feel the comfort of their memory. May you hear their voices in the wind. May you be at peace with your losses. And there's a little poem right there. That's pretty neat. Here we are at Canopus Beach. I'll probably, probably butchered that name, but that's as best as I can do. And they have a bathroom and a snack bar. Unfortunately, I got there after it was closed. The beach closed at six today, it's a Sunday. The water fountains were still on, so got some water refill, thank goodness, because the last three or four sources have been dry. I've been carrying extra water, so I'd never ran out, but you gotta respect the heat, that's for sure. I do not wanna run low on water these days. It's too bad I got here so late at 6.20. I wouldn't mind going for a little swim, but ah, got to get up early for tomorrow's heat wave and get hiking before it gets really bad. And our hiker campsite is right down this road, pretty close. So let's go see what that's like. I was hoping for beachfront camping. They've got us tucked in back here. Nice field though, nice and open. Got to set up camp next, get some dinner. Meet our new friend, Kodiak. He was at West Mountain Shelter the day after me. And this beautiful looking bear climbed up the tree. This tree is directly in front of the shelter and was eating the mulberries. Mm -hmm. Just to prove once again that I'm the only hiker that has not seen a bear. <laughs> Hello, heat rash. Welcome back. Here I am, had dinner, visited with my new hiking buddies. Threw out my tent on the ground, ready to set up my tent for the night, edit and go to sleep, and I realize I don't have my trekking poles. So I'm pretty sure I left them back at the concession stand area where I filled up water. Fantastic. And I was doing so well. There goes my record. At least they're not far, fingers crossed. Oh look, I wonder who left those trekking poles there. I googled how to prevent heat rash and get this. <laughs> it says avoid situations that can cause excessive sweating and avoid strenuous exercise. <laughs> so basically on the trail there's zero preventing heat rash. So we just gotta live with the prettiness that it is. Tents all set up. The low tonight is 72. Tomorrow the high 
um, for feels like temperature is 99 at 5 p.m. So call me crazy, but I think I'm getting up at three and hiking at four tomorrow. I think um, even though I'll be losing a bit of sleep, it's gonna pay off because the sooner I'm done, the less likely I'll be getting heat sickness. So that's it. Y'all have a good night. We'll see you in the morning.